Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming to church today. We trust that you had a great week. Thank you so much. My name is Dami and we are really, really going to have a great time in God's presence today. So get your friends, get your loved ones, get your notepad. Yes, I said your notepad, your viral, anything you can use to take note because today we are going to have a great time in God's house. Before we go on, let us say a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together this precious morning. We ask that you would guide and protect us and give us wisdom today. Instruct us and continue to show that you love us. We love you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Wow, if you said that prayer, I hope you said amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Okay, let us take, you know how we roll. So the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to go into the session for songs and we would have a great time. And when we ride back, we will go into the topic for today. Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you are having a great time. If you are happy to be here, come on, make some noise. I cannot hear you. Yeah. All right. Raise up your hand and say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I didn't hear you. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Yeah. So this song says, Jesus, you love me too much. Tell your neighbor, say, Jesus loves me so much. Yeah, let's do it now. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Come on. Come on. You're amazing. Let's go. You make my life, you make my life feel brand new. One more time, say, you're amazing. Sing it, say. You make my life. Are you ready? Come on, come on. Say, Jesus, you love me. Too much, oh, too much, oh, too much. 
Welcome back. Trust that you had a great time with the songs we had and hope you danced and had a great time there. We love God in one church and we are trusting God that as you're listening to us today, you would have a great time. So are you ready to jot and are you ready for what God is set to share with us today? Like I said, my name is Dami and we are about to have a great time. So today's session, we are going to have to speak on a very, 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 very interesting topic and it is tagged to thou shall not steal i mean for me this is a very personal and interesting topic that god really intentionally wants us to live a life that is true and pure do you know that the statement thou shall not steal is the eighth commandment of the bible yes the eighth commandment of the bible thou shall not steal god instructed us when he spoke to Moses that we should not steal amongst every other commandment and today we're going to really lay emphasis on that that God's what is God's intention about stealing why he doesn't want us to steal and we are going to look at scenarios in the Bible that would help us understand this topic very well let's do it together so Exodus chapter 20 verse 15 was the scripture that says that God was speaking to Moses and God said, thou shall not steal. This was God's instruction to the Israelites. God was speaking to them and told them that thou shall not steal. And I know sometimes we, we can be in situations yeah, where we have something or where we want something but we don't have it. But in this path, God wants us to also be contented with what we have that because you want something does not mean that you need it because you want something does not mean that you need it so god really intentionally really wants us to do the only thing and that is to stay contented with what he has for us and when you look at all the things god has spoken in the bible how god hates sin and God wants us not to sin or to do any form of sin because it pushes us away from him. And stealing is a sin. And you know, sometimes we have scenarios in the house or situations in the house where we see 
mom tells us not to pick up something and we pick it up the chocolate or something mom tells you not to do and you end up picking it up because you wanted it because you wanted it does not mean that you need it if your mom for example tells you that i joseph please do not touch the chocolate on the the chocolate on the table and because at the time in the night you were watching a cartoon or something and you just felt excited and you were hungry and you just felt okay let me just take a lead so mom will not notice even if mom does not notice god sees everything yeah in the sky god sees it god is like a big god has like a big eyes that checks everybody on earth so even if your parents never find out about it, even if your parents never even figure out that you did it, God always see you. Yes. Even if you do it in your room and your door is locked, you take the meat from the pot or you take something or you take someone's biro in school, a pen or something, and you hide it and you take it home, God always see you. And God does not like it. Because when we steal, we commit a sin. And when we commit a sin, we stay away from God. Our lives, our attribute makes us feel guilty of the things that we have done. So God truly, truly does not want us to steal. I want you to make a commitment as before we continue today to say to yourself, say it as you're listening to me. Hi, mention your name, will not steal. Mention your name again. I, I will mention my name, Dam Larry, will not steal because God does not like it. Yes, God really hates us. I won't say hate us because God loves us unconditionally, but God hates the actions that come when we steal. When we contradict God's commandment, for example, when our parents tell us not to do something and we do it, it doesn't mean when they scold us that they hate us. It just means that they want us to be a better person. And that is how it is with God. So God cannot be all the iniquity. God's eyes cannot see us in sin. So what God does to us is to give us instructions to guide us to make sure that we do not commit the same sin or any kind of sin at all and for today like we've been speaking on since morning it's that we should not steal i want to share a story with two people today and i'm sure you would really ex be excited about it there is this prophet habakkuk he's a great prophet in the bible i mean an amazing amazing prophet of god habakkuk is a chapter in the bible in the old testament and this prophet was way before jesus came he was a prophet of god and he loved the lord with all his heart i mean he kept the commandments of god the instructions of god and he was doing the things of god but Habakkuk had his heart worried he was thinking about a lot of things and he complained to god and what was he thinking about can you guess what was he thinking about? In Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 2, and if you read the whole verse, you can do that when you're on. You should read your Bible, by the way. You should read your Bible. So in Habakkuk chapter 1 and chapter 2, we discovered that Habakkuk was complaining to God about the leaders there. The leaders were stealing from innocent people. They were stealing the things of innocent people and making them sad. And Abaco complained to God and cried out that God, these people are stealing and we know it against your rule. And God gave promises of how he was going to deal with those people that were stealing in, chap in chapter 2. Do you see that? That when you sin and because you don't see the consequences or the punishment for it almost immediately, does not mean that you've escaped from the punishment. So if your parent doesn't catch up with you at first, if they later find out what you did or when you steal something from someone or when you're even friends with someone that steals, the punishment would always get to you. The punishment would always get to you. So the prophet was really crying out to the Lord and the Lord told him to wait. The Lord told him to wait. 
and he was going to see what he was going to do to the people and when you read down the bible you would understand this that god really dealt with those that stole but beyond the story i want you to know something today that when you take something that is not your whole or when you know someone that takes something that is not theirs and you're still friends with it breaks the heart of God and God wants you to always do things that makes him proud I want you to say to yourself now again I mention your name like I'm going to say I dummy will always make God proud with my actions say it again I dummy mention your name will always make God proud with my actions and for today the action is that God wants you to stay away from sin God wants you to stay away from sin and the sin that we are talking about today is stealing God wants you to stay away from taking anything or being an, a partaker or someone that knows somebody that steals something from other people because when you take other people's property it makes them sad and when someone is sad because they've lost something it breaks the heart of God knowing that it's his own child or his children that did something like that so I have points written here and the first one I want to share with you is number one like I've said earlier it is a sin to steal God does not like us when we commit any form of sin and also for today make it a notion and make it a, a what's the word here make it a promise to yourself yes that you would always stay away from taking anything that does not belong to you one or you will not give it because not because your parents ate it alone but because God does not like it and like we made a confession earlier that we would always make God proud when you stay away from sin you are making God proud the next one is that God is never happy when his children steal as long as God does not want you to steal it's not just for your own sake it's because his love for us is bigger God can give you everything you want. Do you know in the Bible that God says in Matthew 6, 33, that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto us. Seeking the righteousness of God is also known as obeying the commandments of God. So when you stay away from sin, you are making God happy when you have an opportunity to take something that is not your own and when you know that nobody would catch you or nobody would know that you were there or they would never even find out yes they, there are scenarios that you might take something maybe it's in a large quantity and you just take a little part of it and they won't even know anything has left there but God sees everything but when you have the opportunity to do something that nobody can see or you will not even get caught and you still decide to do the right thing you are making God proud you're making God proud number three remember the first one I shared with you one it is a sin to steal two God is never happy when his children steal number three is even only not to God but to everyone when you get caught you lose your credibility another word for credibility there is that when you get caught people will find it hard to trust you again because trust is what trust is priceless trust is priceless you can you can try to make people believe you eventually, but you have lost a lot of faith in yourself because of the actions you've taken. People would lose faith in you when you say something. They won't even be able to put you 
somewhere or in any position again or they can't even trust you that you can be in charge of something in your school or be in charge of something at home because they have the notion that you would might steal something you might have decided to change eventually and decide that oh okay i'm not doing that again but will people see that part of you easily no they would not they won't see that part of you easily so god wants you to stay away from sin because when you get caught you lose your self-worth in the sight of people and trust is priceless then they will tell you that don't put that lady alone with the cake she will take everything don't leave her alone in the kitchen don't give her don't leave her alone with anything she might take it and that makes people lose confidence in you and when you find out later on that the reason you were not kept in the position or made in charge of something or left alone to do things is because they don't trust you i'm sure you will feel bad about that won't you i'm sure you'll feel bad about that so number four is that god always punish anyone that steals god always punish anyone that steals. remember the first point i i told you i told you remember what's the first point it is a sin to steal the second point is that god is never happy with his children that steals no the third point is that when you steal you get caught or when you steal and you get caught you lose your trust and when you lose your trust it is something that is hard to find or get back easily because trust truly is priceless the fourth one like i'm about to say is that god always punish anyone that steals i'm sure you and i don't want god to punish us because we love to enjoy god's love we love to see that god is always showing us his mercy he's kind to us he protects our families so our response to his love is that we obey his commandments and like i said in earlier that exodus 20 spoke about all the commandments of god but the one that we are laying emphasis on today is in verse 15 that says that thou shalt not steal have you been in a position before where you've taken something before and you and you feel bad you are listening to this right now and you wish that i wish i didn't take that i wish i didn't do that i wish i didn't do the other stuff i wish i didn't take it thinking that nobody sees me oh now dami has been able to let me know that god sees everything beyond that god loves you god cannot stop loving you and your response to that love is that you become intentional about doing the things that makes god happy and makes him proud of you i'm sure you and i want to make god proud so we need to stop stealing if you've been involved in stealing and if you ever find yourself in the position to take something that does not belong to you remember today that stealing is wrong stealing is wrong why not only wrong because your parents and your mom and everyone around you wants it wants you not to steal but wrong because god does not like it wrong because god does not like it and today the the summary of the lesson today is that you and i must intentionally live to see that we avoid anything that makes god unhappy and today's context that is that we avoid stealing let us say the confession you and i made earlier hi mention your name i i'll mention my name dami promise to always do what makes god happy say it again i mention your name again are you mentioning your name i dami promise to always be contented with what i have the first one we said is to make God happy. The second one is to be contented. Number three is that mention your name again. Hi, I'll mention my name, Dami. Promise to always stay away from people that steal and not be a partaker of it. And if you do these confessions, if you wake up every morning and you see an opportunity to take something that is not yours or to be a part of it, 
and you run away from it, do you know what you've done? You just made God proud. I mean, when you see a situation like that and you run away from it, you can look up to the sky and say, God, I just made you proud. And God would always, always, always be excited about that. And if you've been in this position where you've taken something that is not yours, you can go back to your parents today and tell them that I did something that is wrong. I took this, it does not belong to me, and return it back. If it's for someone else, maybe it's something that you cannot return back or it's gone, you can always tell them that I'm sorry for making you unhappy and taking what does not belong to you. But this is what I did and make things better. When you even do that, even if it's a long time ago, do you know what you're doing? You're also making God proud. Can we say a word of prayer together as we end today's lesson? I hope you've learned something. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for everyone listening to me right now. Father, we thank you because you love us. We thank you because you are intentional about us. We thank you because you love us unconditionally. We thank you because there is nothing we can do that would stop you from loving us. And today we make a new commitment to you to always do what makes you happy, to stay away from things that makes you sad, to become all you want us to be. And like in your word, follow your commandments. And we'll stay away from everything that makes you sad including taking someone's property or stealing in any form father we declare today that we love you and as we go out in this week and all through the rest of the year we would always make you proud we would always make you proud and we would always make you proud thank you father for loving us for in jesus name we are afraid can someone say amen so if you've said that prayer and you've learned what I said to you today, always make God proud and stay away from sin and anything that makes you steal. God bless you.